Welcome back to the show. Now it's been a very busy time down at COP28 and a lot happening. So let's see what's going on. Now I am joined by human rights and sustainability advisor creating climate investment opportunities for leaders and advisors through her company to foster resilience through sustainable solutions. Please join me in welcoming Christi Christine Amor Levar to the show. Christine, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Dua. Now Dua. I am very intrigued by your company, Investors for Climate. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Absolutely. So I co-founded it with a partner in New York and it's to harness capital for climate solutions. We create closed door networking events in Singapore and New York to bring uh, climate investors together and the network around sustainable solutions that they can invest in. We curate in interesting uh, speakers around new technologies, uh, upcoming you know, initiatives like uh, Blue Bonds, for example, or AI use it, uh, to solve climate change, and curate that way an opportunity for them to network and mix and learn about new solutions that they could consider for investments. Incredible. Yeah. And how has COP28 been in bringing that sort of dialogue that you already have, you know, in Singapore sure. and New York and bringing it to Dubai? What's that been like for so you? So it's very timely, actually, that I'm here. Uh, it's my first COP um, and I was invited by Singapore as part of the delegation. This is the second time that Singapore has a pavilion only at COP. Um, and, you know, the, the talk of climate finance is really at front and center of this COP, I feel. so. It's very timely that I'm involved in these initiatives, you know, as I mentioned in New York and Singapore, although we're hoping to scale in five other uh, financial centers. And the conversation at COP in the last few days has really been about moving as much capital towards innovative solutions through different initiatives that I've attended over the last few days. So I find it's very uh, opportunistic that I'm here at that moment with very much this company at the heart of what I'm doing. Oh, amazing. And how has it been your personal experience with kind of the participants right here in Dubai? Are you um, intrigued, innovated? by the different dialogues happening here at COP? Sure. So there's a lot of things going on, as you know, around COP. Lots of conversations in different pavilions, in the green zone, in the blue zone. Uh, the highlight for me was really attending uh, the Business and Philanthropy Climate Forum, mm -hmm. which had it, its inaugural event uh, here at COP, which is really bringing the business uh, groups together for the first time at COP over two days discussion. So for me, I learned a lot about the commitment of a lot of corporates um, to moving more capital and, and their power and support towards trying to scale solutions in different sectors. You know? mm -hmm. So we had talk around the, the coalition for new food. So you know, there was a, a commitment of 10 to $20 billion by 2030 to try to revolutionize our food system, which is, I think, very hopeful because it's one of the biggest emitters in our industry around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a lot of other discussions. You know, XPRIZE CEO Anusha Ansari committed with XPRIZE to other prizes around coral restoration, uh, wildlife conservation, which is kind of new in the conversation. So we're putting a lot more focus on biodiversity, which I find very hopeful because I also have an NGO called Her Planet Earth, focused on, on helping women uh, gain resiliency for climate change around wildlife conservation, agricultural programs, etc. What a dialogue to have. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, what about the role of artificial intelligence and emerging technologies yeah. when it comes to climate change? Has, has there been a lot of dialogue around that? So that's a very exciting space. And I was uh, privileged to attend a closed door uh, networking session of just 25 people with uh, uh, Vice President Al Gore, who has been in town for the discussions. And the, the talk was really around how does AI support the initiatives around climate change? So, you know, it was a very lively discussion in a very small group. We had uh, ministers as well from the UAE present in the room and I really liked what uh, Vice President Al Gore mentioned that even though AI can be a huge uh, support in accelerating progress around climate initiatives, we can't depend solely on them and not lose track of what the efforts we need to do in terms of decarbonization and obviously, obviously moving away from a lot of the fossil fuel uh, exploitation in different parts of the world. And what are your key takeaways from this COP28? So for me, the biggest takeaway is the power of collaboration. I'm an optimist and very hopeful of the outcome of this COP. I think for the very first time, we're moving huge amount of capital. I think the presidency of COP announced yesterday almost $57 billion committed at COP this year, which is uh, you know, unprecedented. So lots of money are moving towards innovative solutions in many sectors, blended finance, uh, protecting biodiversity, uh, rege regenerating food systems, helping the more vulnerable, looking at emerging markets. So that's really hopeful and that's going to take more collaboration. So for me, that's the key. You know, As I continue back and I head back to Singapore after COP and continue my work in, in advocacy and of course with Investors for Climate, I realize the, the role that women can play especially as well in bringing those parties together. We are natural custodians of the earth 
It is Mother Earth incarnate in us, in all of us. And so I feel that women can play a huge role in bringing the parties together. So governments, NGOs, businesses, we create a, an atmosphere of collaboration just by being who we are and the way we interact in society uh, very naturally um, as women. So I believe that women can play a bigger role longer term and we can continue to collaborate because it's going to take all of us and all of the heart to bring money and collaboration and solutions to the forefront to tackle this climate crisis that we're all facing. I couldn't agree more. Christine, thank you very much for joining us in the Thank studio. you for having me. Do. It's a pleasure. You. Welcome back to the show. Now, there's been a lot happening all over the city and also in our studio. And we've got a wonderful guest with us, co-host, and we need to find out a little bit more. So, Amy, tell us more. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have a quick 60 second question round oh. with you, Mega. And obviously you've given us incredible insight into what is happening at COP28, but we want to get to know you better. I studied for the COP quiz. <laughs> well, I hope you know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, oh, okay. nothing sure. too difficult. I sure. wrote the question. Go for it. It's not going to be hard. <laughs> Are you ready? Can we get I 60 seconds on the clock? <laughs> and go. If you weren't a journalist, what kind of work would you be doing? Oh, I would be a painter. Incredible. One thing that you cannot live without. Mm. Oh, so many. Chocolate. Chocolate's a good one. Your motto in life and work. So it's a piece of career advice. Um, which was I'm going to translate for everyone, which was that do everything like you're going to win an award for it. Let every piece of work be like you're going to win an award for it. Very insightful. Yeah. I love that. Your hidden gem in Dubai. Oh, but it wouldn't be hidden if I said. Oh. Mm, I love Three by Ava. It's a little cafe down on Wassel Road and the food is incredible. Incredible. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Oh, a superpower would be to be a fly on the wall in all kinds of discussions and see what's going on. That would be a very good very one. Very good journalist superpower. A book that you are reading at the moment. Oh, I'm currently reading Elon Musk's biography. I'm about 20% of the way through, but really enjoy it. Incredible. Yeah. Last question, because we've just run out of time. Why Dubai? Why Dubai? Um, in what context? Um, why Dubai? Because it's the place where I went to high school where we didn't know where we came from. Nobody was aware of what culture, country, religion they're from. Um, it's a place where everybody just coexisted as we just belonged to Dubai. So incredible that's Lovely. true it's such a great melting pot is dubai yeah. where yeah. we all essentially make it our home wherever yeah. we're from so yeah. i love that oh my god i've got to say thank you so much for joining us on today's mm. episode it's been an absolute pleasure to have you in the studio and for all of your insightful knowledge on what is going on at cop 28 thank you so much my pleasure thanks for having me guys yeah. thank you so it's now time for a break, but right after, Ash caught up with Sadhguru at Expo City Dubai to discuss his perspective on soil and climate change. So don't go anywhere.